Good morning, folks. We have no less than 14 pieces of science news to hit today. We had another special video come out last night on potentially the most devastating aspect of Earth catastrophe cycle. We've got these cute little active regions trying to churn up sunspots as we go to spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day on our star brought the crossing of central heliographic longitudes by the coronal hole. Its solar wind will arrive at Earth early in the coming week. Meanwhile, solar wind right now is dropping out calm and quiet geomagnetic conditions taking the hint, all quiet as well. The storm system we warned of days ago approaching Europe has been brutal. Tornado in England, high winds and flooding to the south, and right now the low pressure cell sitting atop the continent and driving those storms into the southern regions is making a jump from Italy over to the southeastern portion of the continent, snow coming in behind as the convergence gets to Turkey tomorrow. Also have eyes open in the southeastern U.S. While it is nice to report on something other than record cold and snow in the states, this type of severe weather focused into these bands, especially what's coming to South Carolina Monday and into Tuesday, is not exactly my idea of a nice peaceful day. Now let's kick off the science news nice and easy. This is the Perseus molecular cloud, and now this is what it looks like from Spitzer in infrared. The true nature of the wispy gases and dust in the region is revealed, demonstrating its fine detail, its expanse, and just the pretty shot we need before I blast 13 more science updates at you now. We're starting with space weather and human health. Three articles about astronaut risk, but which applies on some level to humans on the ground with a weakened magnetic field. First here, the relativistic electrons from the Van Allen belts can provide as much radiation as a whole day of cosmic rays. These can already enter the atmosphere when Earth is hit by a CME and the fields compress. In a magnetic reversal, that effect could be tremendous. We are also getting two studies on the charged particle aspect from the positive side, the high energy protons from the sun, and findings that indeed cancer is the more stark risk than cardiac issues for those exposed. The protons are less of a radiation risk for us on the ground, by the way, less than the relativistic electrons and cosmic ray cascades. Couple earthquake papers up next. First, they have used fiber optic networks to detect lightning and thunder induced seismic waves in the ground. They're finding most interestingly that the seismicity created is related to the electricity level or power of the lightning bolt. You don't say. And that leads us into electroquake paper number 500 on the decade. I don't know, actually, at least it feels that way, it might be more, but the point is that we've gotten to the point now where every single major earthquake is analyzed in this way, and the papers are not being held back at review or editorialization. Learn more about electroquakes at quakewatch.net. Little breather here as a fun article is up next for those frustrated by papers behind paywalls. The U.S. government is driving hard to make all grant or federally funded studies free to read immediately upon publication. The journals are furious. Read their feeble, self-serving arguments and their disingenuous public concerns of such a policy. Yeah, more access to information will doom us all, right publishers? Up next, an interesting paper on Comet 67P, describing the landslide seen on the comet by Rosetta. They indicate that this comet, and likely many comets, are indeed consolidated pieces all mashed together, rather than one giant mass or a fluffy aggregate. Like a spongy rock with crevices and pockets and voids within, these agglomerations allow for easier solar energy getting into the surface, easier access to the volatiles, and easier release of those volatiles and gases. Meteors are likely to be the more solid bodies. With 14 science articles today, you had to know there was going to be one about a dark matter fail. Today's no-show comes from Fermi, which has a much more important job of finding gamma-ray bursts in the cosmos, so we will give it a pass on not finding the imaginary particles that aren't there anyway. We're going to round up with five geomagnetic investigations. Yeah, the journals went a little nuts on it this week. And first, this one is not about the 12,000-year excursions, but the much, much longer, hundreds of thousands of years long, full cron magnetic reversal cycle. This is not the thing that we are discussing as happening now to Earth, but indeed, they say that such a major longer-term event might be closer than not, potentially as soon as 20,000 years from now. And again, that's the longer cron, not the 12,000-year excursion cycle. But interestingly, those longer crons are under fire as being potentially much harder to date than anticipated. They're finding major beryllium sources, which are also often used to date meteoritic impacts, have as many problems as carbon dating. FYI, as they learned in Nepal this year dating the ice with krypton, that is the best way.
We are learning a bit about perhaps why there is such a focus on iron at Earth's core. Folks, there's only so much that can actually be explained about the plasma cosmology belief that Earth's real core is plasma. We have been saying that that's what sits at the center for years. Rolf did a video suggesting the same thing just a few days ago, and I know some of you saw that one. Indeed, the iron precipitate out of the lower mantle and outer core likely does reside at the plasma pressure blast-out point from the central modulation zone out to where it meets the force of gravity and pressure from the entire world above. Up next... Folks, there really might be a magnetic excursion in between the 12,000-year cycles, perhaps on the 6,000-year marks in the middle. I haven't seen as much evidence on those, but I've seen more than none, and today we add to the concept, especially because the last one they say Earth had, several thousand years ago, involved both the magnetic pole shift and a maximum of field intensity. That would be the opposite of the dropout to minimum we're seeing now. Obviously, no cataclysm as the field gets stronger, no mega extinctions at the time, but if it pings down, why wouldn't it ping back up as part of the cycle, and the bigger picture is all coming together piece by piece. Last but not least, folks, first, the major crons are hard to date, and now they don't even show up globally. Folks, this examination will end up with marathon legs, saying that the more recent and short-term cycle magnetic excursions are the only ones found globally with golden spike-like signatures and which appear to not only be global but synchronous. The field just goes. And folks, no such description has ever been made of the longer cron reversals. Frankly, if those do take thousands of years as they say, what's the big deal? These short-term excursions, as illogical as it may seem, seem to be much more drastic, widespread, and devastating, especially because during one of them, a squirrel fart from the sun with Earth's weakened shield could mean a cosmic lightning arc discharge to the ground. That was our special video yesterday. If you have watched and enjoyed any aspect of the Catastrophe Cycle videos, this is definitely not one for you to miss. It is linked below. And folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. Of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.